good afternoon or morning, evening, wherever you are in the globe. This is Pam and I am doing what I'm calling my own personal mini workshop. When I first began painting, I feel like I rushed from workshop to workshop, tutorial to tutorial, trying to gather everything I could at once as though time was of the essence <laughs> and I had to have it all figured out by the end of the day which is not the case, especially in watercolor. It's a gradual process and journey. I've been painting now for about three and a half years in watercolor. I did acrylics and a lot of sketching before then. Um, but I have what I call my toolbox. My, to my artistic toolbox has tools and tips and suggestions on how to best work in watercolor. And rather than attending any new classes or anything at this point in time, I felt like I needed to look at the skills that I have learned, work on them, and increase my, my experience in doing the same thing, in doing, working on those skills, if that makes sense. So today, my number one topic on my list was seeing in shapes, not details. This book is a great book by um, Charles Dunn on conversations in paint. And yeah, these are cat paws that walk through paint, not part of the cover. Because <laughs> I have cats that like to help me. But this is a great book. If any of you are looking for great instruction, it's not on a tutorial. He just covers just about anything you could possibly think of when it comes to the world of painting. Uh, particularly in watercolor. And, uh, but he has a great thing in here on symbols, that symbols are the nouns in the vocabulary of vision. I really like that. It says you're a symbol collectors. An idea is the highest sense that word cannot be con conveyed except by a symbol. So I really want to work on that my tendency is to try to get detailed. Now, if you're a realistic painting painter and that's your desire, then the details are gonna be important to you. But in watercolor, it has kind of a way of moving and swishing around with the water and uh, on your paper. And so it's not always cut and dry. And I am learning that if I think in symbols, and not get detail drunk, as Steve Mitchell calls it, people are going to know what it is that you're painting. As an example, when I was, years ago I taught kindergarten, and I tried to teach my students to express themselves um, without coloring books. I really was kind of d disliked coloring books. I wanted them to feel and experience and think and outside the box. And I remember one day I asked them to draw a turtle and one little girl was just crying and crying and crying because she didn't know how to paint a turtle. Because she was always painted with coloring books. So I went over to her and I thought, all right, let's, and I'm gonna use this as an example to get started today. What is a turtle? His shape is oval. His head is an oval. His feet are little circles. His tail's a little triangle. Now, immediately, I want to start going in for details. But what I'm trying to work on today for myself in my little toolbox and skills is to look at the shapes and not the details. I get so detail-oriented that I miss the whole point. If I were to be painting a water scene or a landscape that had water and grass and I put this shape in there in some form it could even go like this walking you know seeing a little turtle see I'm going to go for details in the grass you would more than likely know that that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to paint in that situation Another uh, uh, thing that we often see that I noticed while I was out the other day 
was the shapes in my area of trees. The tree lines are ovals. They might be different, sh different heights, but they're still ovals. So if I had, were to put these arches or even ovals. See, you would you would see that there's a tree line, but actually if I'm painting, say I have a horizon line, uh, the things that are, this is a different topic, different study in my little workbook, but toolbox, but if they're further away, they're gonna be smaller increase in size as they're closer. So if I were to draw my little round trees here in this situation, um, you could tell that those were trees if I were painting a landscape and getting smaller in the distance. You see that? So that's what I wanna think about today is shapes, not details. Let's take another shape. Let's do an, an arch. And every little four-year-old girl, and all of us probably at one time or another, even still, like to draw rainbows. See? That could be a rainbow. That could also be Kind of getting into my perspective again here. That's not really what I wanted to do, but that all kind of runs together. These could be, actually, let me do it this way. See, now I'm thinking I'm wanting to go into uh, details. <laughs> That's what I'm trying not to do. That could be a tree line straight. That's a crummy tree line straight, so let's not look at that one, but arches. It could be a door. It could be a window. We could add a square. We could add a triangle, and now we have a house. So I think you're getting my idea, hopefully, that when we think in terms of shapes, not just details. We might be able to tell what that is. I don't know what the heck that is. It's just, just doodling now. Um, another thing we can do is triangles. What can we do with that? Of course, I can go into a house that could be a pyramid out in the middle of Egypt with desert, sand, the great pyramids. And then I find myself wanting to add detail, of course. Um, of course, there would also be another side. This is more like that. <laughs> um, but we, we paint in symbols, symbols, not necessarily details. And when we do, people should be able to tell what we're painting. Even if it's an abstract painting, the symbols would give an idea of what you're painting. Here's one that I worked on For the last couple days, I've been working on this. Oops, let me get out. There we go. Uh, this is a sky landscape someone sent me. And you can see here, I have my skies, I have my clouds, I have the shapes. This is not a detailed painting, but you can see from the shapes 
here that that's probably and is intended to be a tree line. And down here is lighter, there's more of the grasses. This still has more work to do on it. Now that it's dry, I can come back in and add more detail if I wish. But what I'm trying to be careful of with myself lately is to think in terms of shapes, not details. And I think that will improve my, my overall painting. Here's another one I have been working on. This was not finished. Something I was working on for a friend of mine. It had mountains in the background. The trees were here on the right. This was a field. And in fact, I might go back in and finish this. Had a couple oxen and farmers plowing in the field. And um, now that I look at this, I gave up on this one and started a new one. But you can see where the um, where they were plowing those fields and there were a couple farmers over here. I might actually try to go back in and finish this. And interestingly enough, when I did finish this painting to give to a friend, this was a scene of a photograph I had taken in Ethiopia many years ago. I was driving through the country. It was a beautiful mountain and um, background. And then these big trees on the right, smaller trees in this middle, middle section. And then there were two farmers out in the field with their oxen plowing. I ended up simplifying, simplifying, simplifying. And what I finally gave my friend, who is Ethiopian, he's my dentist, he's from Ethiopia, when I gave him the finished painting, obviously not this one, because I kept working on many versions. I, at that point, I, in my frustration, I had gotten down to one oxen and just one farmer. <laughs> and the rest was just the suggestion of trees. And his first statement when he saw it, which I thought was really interesting, he said, oh, two farmers in a field plowing. I was like, I kind of chuckled to myself because there was not. It just made the point that when you get the shapes, general shapes in the atmosphere of what you're trying to do, the mind's eye will fill in the details. Because he had grown up in Ethiopia, this scene to him, even though this one is not finished, he might even recognize this one just at this stage as being a field with farmers and their oxen. Makes me kind of want to go back into it now. Um, but that's what I'm trying to say here in this little mini workshop to myself. Here's another version of that same, same painting I was trying to do. See, I just gave up. There's another version. Here was another version. I worked on this again and again and again until I finally got one that I liked and that I gave to him. So what I'm trying to work on for myself today is to think in shapes and not details. That when my shapes are correct, for instance, this you can tell this is a man here, hopefully, reaching out to his oxen. Here's another farmer with the, the, with the bar across the oxen. I think you can tell that. I don't have the big tree here. I have the mountain and the background and some of the actually little look like little buildings. So what I want us to do today in my own practice and in yours, if you wish to join me, is think shapes and don't get detail drunk and see if you can recognize your painting for what it is with the shapes only. This is just a line of trees but no specific shapes, but yet you can tell it's a line of trees. That's my quest for today, and I challenge you to join me in my Art Toolbox Challenge Day 1, Shapes, Not Details. Enjoy yourself and follow your brush, as I say on my group on Facebook. Have fun.